friends today we will learn about some of the rebellions in karnataka against the british most of these rebellions they arose after the death of tipu in the fourth anglo mysore war tipu sultan was killed by the british with that the rule of hyderali and tipu sultan came to an end we find these armed rebellions raising their hood one after the other against the british and british had to put lot of efforts to quell these some of these were local rebellions and some were a demand for freedom first of all we will discuss about dundia walk dundia is the name walk he got that surname a title added to his name walk means tiger dundia the tiger dundia walks rebellion against the british is an important one a noted one he was born in a maratha family at chennagiri in the kingdom of mysore he was called as the walk the tiger as he was very brave the british had called him as plunderer looter they did not consider him as a rebel he started his career as a cavalry soldier in hyderabad's army later tipu sultan got him arrested for a certain rebel activity he had undertaken he was thrown into prison he was released by the british only after tipu sultan was killed in the fourth anglo mysore war till then he was a prisoner under tipu sultan once he came out of the prison he started his rebellion against against the british due to differences with the tipu i told you he had to spend quite an amount of time in the prison next to that as a rebel he started his activities against the british he never used to get stationed in one single place he used to keep moving about he collected the soldiers discontent contented soldiers of tipu's army and the feudatory rulers who had lost power he brought them all together and he built an army with a small army he had built he started fighting against the british it was all a hide and seek guerrilla fight he used to keep moving about from one place to the other he captured bidanur fort captured the shomoga fort but when he tried to capture the chitradurga fort 
It failed. It was an unsuccessful attempt. He was looking dangerous at times. The French at Mahi of Malabar, they to extend their support to the Diyabak. The moment the French extend their, extended their support, the British turned very angry and they were determined to see that he is terminated. He is killed, he is finished. The Marathas and the Nizams who were allies of the British then, they, did, they too did not allow him to settle down. He had to move from place to place with his troops. He continued his warfare with the British. Lord Wellesley ultimately decided to end his adventures. The British attacked him and killed him at Konaga near Yadaparavi a battle takes place from there he moves to Konagal the British follow him and they kill him at Konagal so some historians have considered him as a plunderer a looter some have considered him as a patriot who fought for freedom, who caused a lot of trouble to the British and that is the story of Dundia Wak. He was a rebel, no doubt, and he caused a lot of headache to the imperialist British. Now we move on to the next. She is a woman who proved to be the first lady in India to fight with the British. She was the first woman independence activist of Bharat. 1857, we see Jansi Rani Lakshmi Bai. It was decades earlier to that that we had Rani Chennamma hailing from a small place called Kittur. She turned to be A great force and the British had to put a lot of efforts to see that her rebellion is checked. Kittur lies in between Darwad and Belgaum. Even today, Kittur fort is there. You recollect and remember the grave fight that this woman had put up against the British. When you go to Kittur and have a look at the fort there, it's a monument preserved by government of India today. From a very young age, she received training in horse riding, sword fighting, archery, Rani Chennamma was married to Malla Sarja Desai. He was the ruler of Kittur and Rani Chennamma was only 15 years then. But her married life was cut short 
as her husband died in 1860. Her only son, Shivalinga Rudra Sarja, died eight years later. Kittu Rani Chinnamma, she adopted a boy named Shivalingappa because she has no issues now though the issue she had he expired so she wanted someone to take over the throne of Kitur and rule it so she adopted a child but the British did not accept it. The doctrine of lapse. The Indian kings who did not have children and adopted someone from outside. Adopted. You own them. They were denied the right to rule by the British. See, look at the British. Who are they to tell it? They had come from Europe. And they govern, they rule, they order, they dictate. They say, Indian kings who do not have issues, who adopt children, will, won't have they won't have the right to rule. Such kingdoms become a part of the British Empire. They have to forgo the right over the throne. Many Indian kings did not have issues. They all had to lose their kingdoms for the reason they did not have a male issue. The British were cunning. The subsidiary alliance, it may be, or now, the doctrine of lapse brought in by Dolousy. All these are clear signs that the British had the imperialist designs. They wanted to rule the whole of India make it into their strong colony. So Kittu Rani Chinnamma was denied the right of her adopted child taking over the throne. Chinnamma got angry. She rose in rebellion against the British. In the battle that followed, Thackeray the collector and political agent of the British in Dharwad was shot dead. And many British were taken prisoners. They became prisoners of war. The British attacked Kittur again under the leadership of Colonel Deacon. The Kittur army fought bravely but as is the common trait, the traitors sneaked in and mixed mud and dung in the gunpowder in the cannons. The cannons could not fire. At the right opportune time, Rani got cheated. They were her own soldiers. Her own. Some of her soldiers had been purchased by the British. They had been bribed. They were made to stand against Kittur Rani. It's a matter of treason. Ultimately, Rani was defeated. This is, the story has been the same. With regard to Tipu too, we see their Mir Sadiq. 
في سراج الدولة في سي مير جافر ستوري اف كتور تو وينت اون دي سيم لاينز چنن چنن ما اتمتت تو فلي دي باتل فيلد ات دي الوين دور بس شي واس كابتشر شي واس امبريزن ات بيلا فنجل فورت بيلا فنجل فورت شي داي in 1829 now one of our lieutenants he was her army chief to a great name a great patriot who served her mistress like anything sangulli rayana sangulli rayana was the army chief of the kingdom of kittur during the time of rani chennamma he fought along side rani chennamma for the independence of kittur rani chennamma never was never she was not ready to become a vassal of the british she fought bravely and her chief lieutenant sangulli rayana is also a brave soldier to be remembered he was imprisoned by the british he was imprisoned by the british but after kittur fell in the kittur battle rani got defeated sangulli rayana was imprisoned but later they left him thinking that he may not be rebellious thereafter after he was released he decided to continue for kittur he organized an army of 500 men and held secret meetings because he did not have the kingdom right before him he had turned rebellious he gathered 500 soldiers trained them up started having secret meetings he aimed at looting the treasury and taluk officers of the british a kind of guerrilla warfare he switched over to so he aimed at looting the british treasuries british revenue officers the taluk officers in order to capture rayana the british used the sais because the sais were opposing chennamma they were supporting the british they were not ready to support chennamma so to capture rayana the british take the help of they they says the british thought that rayana was being instigated by rani chennamma hence they shift chennamma to kusugal prison from bailahungala where rani chennamma may not have the direct contact of rayana later the story goes on and on ultimately rayana was treacherously captured with the help of some of his own men he was brought to darwad ultimately rayana was hanged to death and a hero's story 
comes to a close. Next we have a rebellion from Dakshina Kannada and Kodagu region. Rebellion of Amara Sulya. Rebellion of Amara Sulya. Sulya, the surname, refers to the current one of the current taluks in Dakshina Kannada district, Sulya. He belonged to that place, Amara Sulya. Amara Sulya, his rebellion was basically a farmer's rebellion. The farmers too had risen against the British because the policies of the British, the way they collected taxes from the farmers, the exploitation of the farmers by the British had left farmers in a treacherous condition. They were born in poverty, lived in poverty and died in poverty. So these farmers were led by Amarasulya. The British dethroned Chikkavira Rajendra. He belonged to the Haleri dynasty. Haleri dynasty. It happened in 1834. Kurk. We come across this aspect when we refer to the pages of history of Kurk. He was arrested. Chikkavira Rajendra was arrested. He was very popular. But the British did not keep him in prison here. He was sent to Kashi. Kashi in North India. He was sent to Kashi and he was kept in prison there. Wherein he will not have any contact with his followers. But this created instability in Kodagu. Because Chikkavira Rajendra was a popular king. He was a great leader, a good administrator. So his absence was marked. His absence was marked. And people did not feel at home in the absence of their favorite king. So everywhere there was instability. Many Local leaders, they raised their hooks. So local rebellion started here, there, here, there. They never allowed the British to rest. Swami, Aparampara, Kalyana Swami, these are different names, popular names. Aparampara, Swami Aparampara, Kalyana Swami, one more rebel, Puttabasappa. They organized a rebellion against this, against the plight of the farmers. All the three declared that they are part of the Haleri dynasty that ruled Kodagu. Chikkavira Rajendra may not be here, but we have inherited it. We have a right, we have an access to the future of Kodagu and we continued, we continue the fight of Chikkavira Rajendra in the days to come, they declared. Swami Aparampara, who assumed the leadership of the rebellion, was captured in 1834 while Kalyana Swami was captured in 1837. But the people of Lower Kodagu, 
continued their rebellion under the leadership of Puttapasappa. He declared that the tax on tobacco and salt would be withdrawn if the rebels assumed power. Puttapasappa said, in case we come to power, we will see that the tax on tobacco is withdrawn, the tax on salt too is removed. They captured the government office in Bellare. It was the first move in this rebellion by Puttapasappa. Puttapasappa killed an Amaldar, Taluk Revenue Officer Amaldar, which helped gain more support for the rebellion. People started trusting them. Oh, something is happening. These people can get us the rights, rights back. The rebels marched towards Mangalore and looted the treasury. And they also attacked the prison at Bantwal. The British got totally disturbed because Mangalore was one of their headquarters. The British sought the army from Talacheri and Kannur. Talacheri and Kannur are places in Kerala. They got their army stationed there. They got army from Bombay in order to quell the uprising, the rebellion put up by Puttapasappa. On learning about this development, Puttapasappa and his associates, his followers, they fled to Sulia. The British captured them, not only Puttapasappa and his associates too, and they were all hanged. They were put to death. With that, even Puttapasappa's rebellion too, it got quelled. From here we march on to another rebellion. It is the Surapura Rebellion. Surapura Rebellion. Surapura was once again a Vasal state. What is a Vasal state? When you have mutual obligation with the king and you rule a small area, your state is called a Vasal state. You have somebody who is your head, who is your boss. You are given a small territory, you look after that, you rule as if you are the king there, but you are subservient to the emperor or the nawab or the king. You are not totally independent, but you enjoy quite an amount of independence. Surapura was a vassal state during the rule of Nizam of Hyderabad and the Marathas. A rebellion took place here against the British during the reign of Venkatappa Nayak. Venkatappa Nayaka was ruling. A rebellion took place here in Surapura. And this rebellion was against the British, not against Venkatappa Nayaka. It was against the British. Is the people here The villagers and farmers here, they always, they were angry at the British. They wanted somehow to prove their ability to fight the British and quell them. In 1857, it came to the notice of the government, British government, that the representative of Nana Sahib, representatives of Nana Sahib were present in Surapura. You know, Nana Sahib had fought the first war of independence against the British along with K. 
कितू राणी सॉरी आई एम सॉरी झांसी राणी लक्ष्मी बाई नाना साहेब वॉन्टेड टू स्प्रेड द मेसेज ऑफ देअर अँगर अगेन्स्ट द ब्रिटिश अँड द नीड टू फाईट इट ओव्हर इन द साऊथ टू सो ही हॅड सेंट लॉट्स ऑफ हिज रिप्रेझेंटेटिव्ह टू द साऊथ टू स्प्रेड द मेसेज मेक द पीपल गो फॉर अ रेबेलियन an uprising and keep the british busy in the south too so representatives of nana saheb were present in surapura this particular message was understood it reached the british it reached the british they were able to smell the rebellion oh nana saheb is extending his tentacles into the southern part of india too the british became very suspicious of king venkatappa nayaka's intentions surapura's king venkatappa nayaka he was a popular king people loved him this was people's anger actually and they felt venkatappa nayaka is up to do something against the british he has to be taught a lesson he has to be shown his position otherwise he will definitely rise against the british and it may turn to be very costly for the british the british appointed an officer named campbell a resident officer was appointed to be in the court of venkatappa nayaka and keep reporting to the british about the affairs going on in the kingdom they wanted to keep a close watch on venkatappa nayaka and this officer campbell he submits a report to the british saying that the king venkatappa nayaka is involved in anti british activities so a positive report was given to the british saying that venkatappa nayaka is involved in raising a rebellion he is planning to raise a rebellion against the british that was enough the british army marched and captured surapura in 1858 that was the sorry saga of venkatappa nayaka now we have the koppal rebellion koppal it's a district headquarter today in karnataka koppal and the surrounding regions there they were under the rule of the nizam of hyderabad koppal and the surrounding regions there they were under the nizam of hyderabad nizam of hyderabad had alliance with the british and nizam was truly a tyrant is a dictator he never cared for the oppressed the depressed sections of the society he was exploiting them he oppressed the peasants there peasants farmers farmers pay had to pay heavy taxes to the nizam of hyderabad the farmers were fed up with the rule of the nizam they are waiting for an opportunity 
to fight and see that the nizam is taught a lesson there's no way for the no other way for the peasants but to revolt <clears throat> it was a question of survival for them whatever they had to they were growing in their farmland if everything goes as taxed to the nizam what will they eat how will they survive friends when we think of farmers they were in a very tight spot when british were here no one can ever think of whatever they grew whatever sweat they had put in to grow was turning into not whatever they had earned they had to pay it in the form of tax disasters the government never worried about all these they were after money they were after money they were after wealth they were after raw materials they were dictating they were plundering india the british looted india the british here the british with the support of the nizam they declared war on veerappa veerappa was a zamindar there he represented the farmers and zamindars in that area he was the rebel a very strong rebel he was the one who infused who infused the anger against the british he built it up there would have been another big rebellion the british collected information veerappa who was zamindar who was their leader leader of the oppressed leader of the exploited leader of the farmers the peasants the people the tribals he rebels against the british and he occupies the fort of koppal and other forts in the vicinity the british get alarmed they join the nizam now the nizam could not quell it when the nizam could not quell quell it the british sent they needed help to nizam and the combined forces of the british and the nizam they defeated veerappa veerappa fought valiantly he fought valiantly with this army and he was killed in the battlefield itself the british recapture all the forts that had fallen into the hands of veerappa even the koppal fort they took it back so the british recaptured the fort of koppal even though veerappa's rebellion rebellion was confined to a small area around koppal think what's there koppal is small place what's there but what you see there the story of veerappa the story of his rebellion though it was confined to a small area around koppal it turned to be a popular peasant revolt it represented the mind of the peasants there it became a model an ideal situation and it gave even the signals to farmers elsewhere people elsewhere that we have to fight out this british and see that india becomes free from their hands 
so it inspired many more farmers peasants and local kings vassals to stand against the british and fight it over on the same lines we have one more example the halagali rebellion it's the last in this series we are learning halagali rebellion it's a small place in mudol taluk it's a village in mudol taluk of belgaum district you may say how is that mudol is in belgaum you have to refer to the british history not the current karnataka map in that period mudol was a part mudol was a village in the belgaum district so halagali was a part of the mudol principality a principal area a vassal state in 1857 the british had banned the usage of weapons people cannot keep weapons these tribals farmers they were keeping weapons and when the situation rose they used to turn it against the british they used to tell weapons are required to protect their crops to fight out the wild animals or even the hooligans who attack their farm but actually those weapons would be used against the british when a rebellion rises halagali was known for the bedas tribes they were bedas halagali bedas we say they always kept weapons not for any other reasons they used to keep weapons because they were bedas they were tribes these weapons were a part of their customs every beda every tribal used to keep a weapon for his personal defense because they used to live in forests they had to safeguard themselves from the wild animals and they used to hunt even for meat so these weapons were customary they used to keep every beda had a weapon but now as per the ruling of the british no beda can keep a weapon what they needed very much for hunting the gun the weapon that too can't be kept now they can give up anything these bedas but their fundamental weapon customary weapon a weapon which they have been using from ages if they are asked to give up won't they get angry they rebelled against the british they said we don't accept we will keep weapons it's a fundamental right we have got it from our ancestors how can you ask us to keep the weapons aside they rebelled against the british when they were asked to surrender the weapons to the district magistrate you surrender your weapons to the police they said but they were not ready to surrender they said we won't they bid us up manturu bodni they are all key places there and alagundi and neighboring villages they too joined the bedas of halagali in the rebellion the british army entered halagali and suppressed the rebellion in an inhuman way they got them hanged to them wherever they were caught they used to get them hanged to the trees nearby in a most inhuman way they can't be pardoned for all these they hang hundreds of bedas of halagali in the most inhuman way all the rebels whoever 
raised a slogan or took a weapon in his hand against the British, they were all hanged to death. Halagali rebellion, it was quelled by the British. Friends, we saw quite a few rebellions that of Kittu Rani Chanama, Sanguli Raina, Amar Sulya, or Puttapa Sappa. These are all inspirations for the young generation today. How much of pain our ancestors have taken in order to see that the country becomes free of foreigners. It's a long saga. It should inspire us. We should resolve to see that our freedom becomes Amara. Our freedom stays for a very long time. Forever, I mean. It's in the hands of the present generations. Thank you.